Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to sublimate on canvas without using a laminating sheet. So um, I know that there are several crafters who use laminating sheets and they show you their process for creating designs on canvas, but I'm gonna show you my process for creating a design on a canvas with sublimation without using a laminating sheet. Um, this is one of the designs that I, that I created. This is Peter and I when we went to uh, Paris a couple of years ago before the pandemic and I love it. Um, I love the way this came out and this is one of the family photos that we took last year um, during the pandemic um, but we took it back in November and our family, we are Houston Rockets fans and we we're wearing our Houston Rockets gear and I found the perfect spot in my crafting room to add this right in here. So follow along with me as I show you the materials you'll need and my process for creating designs just as beautiful as this. The materials that you will need in order to complete this project and even though it looks like a, <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff, and I will have everything listed down in the description box below. I like to show you the actual materials just in case you're confused about which ones to purchase or which ones I used. Some people like to use the exact materials that I use and I always wanna have those available to show you. All right, so I'm using ASA paper, the one that's in the black and gold box. I will be using Cricut heat resistant tape to tape the photo to the um, polyester fabric. I'm using these eight by 10 um, canvases. I purchased these in a, I think it was an eight pack um, from Hobby Lobby or I think I purchased them from Hobby Lobby, but I'll, I'll put a link in the description um, from where you can get them on Amazon. I purchased this ink from Amazon. It's the Hippo brand and it does give vivid and bright colors. Um, I will, I'm going to use a lint roller. I'm using my white butcher paper. I typically use two sheets every time I do any kind of sublimation. I use, and I already have them um, pulled apart. I use one to keep on my... Um, heat press and the other one to put on top of the, the image. I will be using polyester fabric, 100% polyester fabric that I purchased in a roll from Walmart. Now there are multiple kinds of polyester fabric that I found. This one is the one that I cut from. I don't know if you can hear that. It's almost sound like like a DJ. Um, and then I also purchased this one, but I didn't use this kind. This one is a bit softer, but you'll see that it's still 100% polyester. So I did not use this one. Um, I am going to try to use these hangables. I haven't, you can see the package is still unopened. I'm going to try to use these. I'll be using my heat press. I will be using a staple gun that I purchased from Walmart. It's an Arrow brand. Um, it didn't come with staples. I had to purchase them separately. I did use my Cricut scissors to cut out the fabric, and I also used my Cricut um, knife to cut around um, the cardstock that I put on the back. So the first design that I made, or the first canvas that I did was this one. This is a picture of Peter and I when we went to Paris, and it's one of the pictures that I love. So when I said I would give this a try, this is the first one I tried. And on the back, I just put a piece of white cardstock so it wouldn't look so messy on the back. And so if I want to hang this, I'll just try to use these. I have not tried these yet. And so we will learn together tonight if this actually works out. Um, and the photo that I'll be doing using during this project is this one right here. Um, my family and I, we are huge Houston Rockets fans. And so when we took our family photos last year, we all had on Houston Rockets gear. And so um, I did let this sit under the heat press for about a minute. And I will show you how I got the image this size. You can see that the image does not look vibrant just yet because it has not been pressed yet. But I will show you my whole process for getting a vibrant image and um, doing uh, sublimation on canvas without using the uh, laminating sheets. Okay, so without further ado, let's head on over to the computer so I can show you how to upload your image into Canva. Okay, I am in Canva, and the first thing I'll do is click Create Design, and I'm going to also click Custom Size, 
The size of the paper that I'm using is eight and a half by 11, but I know that I want my image to print out in landscape, not in portrait mode. I want it to print in landscape and I want it to be measured in inches. So I will change this drop down to inches. I will change the width to 11 and I'll change the height to 8.5, okay? And I just click enter, okay? So the next thing that I will do or the next thing that I did is I clicked uploads. I uploaded an image. I'll upload another one to show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my device and I'm just going to choose a picture. Um, I'll just choose this one right here. Okay, um, this is another one of the family photos that we chose that we um, took during the uh, last um, Thanksgiving. So I will, you know, just move the photo up to the left corner and then just stretch it out on the sheet um, as big as I want it to be. And then I can give it a name. I can just say um, sitting because <laughs> that's what we were doing. And I can download it. I didn't change any of this right here. I can just click download. Okay, it may take a you know a few seconds to download it depending on you know your internet speed or your computer. All right, and then the next thing that I did once I had it downloaded is I went to Silhouette Studio. I click file, I click merge, okay, and it's called, I titled that one sitting, all right, okay, and you know, there are multiple ways to do this. The way that I have found that just worked for me was to um, rotate this photo um, just by doing, you know, doing this and stretching the photo out okay so i'm sure there's another way to do it an easier way a better way a faster way a smarter way this is the way that worked for me okay so i rotated the photo and then i clicked um and i just stretched it out as far as i needed it to go and then i clicked the little printer icon Okay, then this will show me what it should look like. That's so cute. Okay, and I clicked print. I chose my printer. I clicked preferences. I made sure it was on the sublimation preset. And I also had this option for print preview on just to make sure. Okay, um, so even though it looks like this is the print preview, that's not really the print preview. <laughs> so I'm go I click print and then there will be another print preview that will come up and so I can just double check myself to make sure. Not even this, one more box will pop up. Okay, perfect. So this is what it would look like if I were to print this. I could click print from here and print my image and set it under my heat press you know, for a minute to uh, make sure the ink was completely dry. All right, but I'm not gonna print this because I already have the image that I'm going to use and it is this one because in this one we're wearing our Rockets gear even though that's the same exact day. All right, so I'm gonna close this out because I'm not, okay, do you wanna print the document? No. All right, I'm gonna close this out and go over to show you how I'm gonna press this image onto the polyester fabric. Okay, after I finished printing the picture that I'm going to use, um, the next thing I did was I got the picture and I set it under my heat press for about a minute or so. So this is the image. I just set it on the plate for about a minute. All right, so the canvas that I'm using, the size of the canvas that I'm using is eight by 10. Um, and so what I did, and let me just show you, using my favorite, one of my favorite tools. Um, it is eight by 10. Um, what I did was I just cut a piece of fabric from the um, roll of fabric that I purchased and I wanted to make sure that it was big enough to fit all the way around um, the canvas so that I could staple it and um, have enough space. So I knew I could just you know cut it off the, the part that I didn't need. All right, so the next thing that I will do is I will use my lint roller to go 
over this and make sure you know that I don't get any of those blue fabrics if you've already done any type of sublimation and you found blue oh look at that blue fabrics on your uh, material it's because you didn't get it off with your lint roller I'm not worried about these frayed edges because I can just cut those off with my scissors or with my with my knife okay so the next thing that I'll do is put this under my I'll put a sheet of butcher paper on the plate on the heat press plate and then I will um, press that piece of fabric just to make sure that there are no wrinkles and that I add a little bit of heat to it okay so what I'm going to do now is put this on my heat press on the plate for a few seconds just to get all the wrinkles out you want it to be as straight as possible um, not even you know a minute just a few seconds just to get all the wrinkles out and make sure it's flat and straight because this is what is going to be covering the canvas okay all right now I have my sheet of polyester fabric I'm going to take my photo and make sure that you know this is going to fit over my canvas and it's not going to give me any drama Can be perfect all right so the next thing that I um, will do is I will take the photo and I will put it down on the polyester fabric and just add a couple of pieces of tape to make sure that it doesn't move okay I'm gonna put this face down on my polyester fabric and just add a couple of pieces of tape to keep it in place. I probably don't even need this many, but that's what I'm going to do. All right, and I now I'm going to put this on my heat press. I have it set for 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Uh, let me make sure. Set 60 seconds, set. Okay, and I will get a piece of butcher paper. I like to fold mine in half. Don't ask me why. Um, if you don't like to do that, don't do it. But I am because that's what I like to do. So now I will put it on my heat press and show you that process. I'm going to put the picture polyester fabric first the picture is on top I put a piece of folded butcher paper on top of that I'm going to push my plate all the way back press it down start 400 degrees for 60 seconds I have my mat here and I'll be ready to um, take it off when it finishes while that's pressing I am going to go ahead and open this because I need to take this out of the plastic um, so I can just use one of my Cricut knives for that, or I can use my fingernails. I have my hot glue gun heating up, and I have my um, staple gun ready. Show you what we're working with. Okay, so let's see. Look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, we got all of the ink out of that thing. All right. All right, so now what I'm going to do is take this piece of polyester fabric and I am going to fold it over this canvas so that um, it fits the way I want it to fit and I the way that I found it the way that I've found that works best is to just add a piece a few little dots of glue like hot glue to hold it in place and make sure that you know none of the white is showing on the front of your canvas 
Okay, so what I did was, and I do not have a fancy, <laughs> I don't have a fancy glue gun, but it does what I needed to do. I just added a few, not too much, drops of hot glue just to pull my polyester fabric tight and keep it in place so I wouldn't have to hold it. And nobody will see that anyway. Okay. That was the first thing I did. So that once, you know, if I let go, it's still holding on. So this is just, you know, if you know a different way, a better way, do it, do it. Do it till you're satisfied. All right. But this is the way that I did it. All right. And then I took the other end and made sure to pull it super tight. I used my um, staple gun and um, after I put the little pieces of glue, I pulled it tight, 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 tight. Use my staple gun. See how cute that is already? Do you see how cute that is already? Look at that, beautiful. All right. So just making sure that it's super tight. Blue gun, I mean, staple gun. And I just, I didn't take the other staples out. I just added staples where there weren't already staples. So I didn't try to staple on top of a staple. All right, and then I pulled it tight on the other end. And I did the same thing. I added a little bit of hot glue just to keep it in place. If you don't feel the need to do that, don't do it. Do, you know, you have to do what works for you. But this is what worked for me because the first time I did this, I didn't pull it tight enough and there were wrinkles in my picture and I didn't like it. And I don't want you to experience that. Okay, so once I have it pulled tight and I'm sure of it, I stapled again. And I just didn't staple where there were already staples. Now for the sides, I didn't have to do that so much because as long as this was tight, I didn't have that to worry about. But if you are worried about it, um, then you can do that. Now I did find it was necessary to kind of pull these in and then kind of add your, like have a, like a crease here. So this is what I did. Um, I kind of pull this. And um, side note, you doing this project, this was my first time ever using a staple gun so don't think that oh well she does that all the time no i don't i don't okay so you can just add one little staple in the corner and use your scissors to cut off any Excess. Definitely don't need that. You really don't need any of this. But um, I'm going to also show you something that I did on the back of mine so that you can't see the mess anyway. But you definitely don't need that. See how that is? So far, so good. Just pull it tight. Pull it tight.
So tech, look, look how beautiful. Technically, I could be finished with this. However, if I didn't want to just have this unfinished, unkept background, um, I could add a piece of cardstock to the back. That's what I did with this one. I just added a piece of cardstock to the back, and I'll show you how I did that. I actually used hot glue to add cardstock to the back. Okay, so th this is just eight and a half by eleven cardstock. You can just put it, you know, on the back of your image and. Um, you know, you can hot glue it. You can do it however you want to do it. I am going to hot glue this um, just by adding, you know, a little hot glue to each corner. And then all I did was hot, hot glue is hot. <laughs> um, cut off the pieces around it just to have a cleaner look in the back so you can kind of cut it from here if you want you can cut it before you glue it you can you know use an exacto knife do it the way that works for you at that now let me cut that piece off if I want to try to use those hangables let me open these and see now if these hangables don't work we will be learning together okay let's see it says clean surface attach and press with arrows pointing up pair so I use alcohol Pair red tap facing down, pair sets, press firmly, slide up and off, rub and press, reattach. Okay, so this is going to take some time. So I clean the surface, attach and press with arrows facing up. Let's see what that looks like. So it has like a, a Velcro piece, um, like the this piece feels like felt. And then this is the rough part of it and I guess you just match them up okay it says attach and press with arrows pointing up I'm assuming these are these are arrows oh these are arrows okay so I know where I want to put this on my wall and once I get it cleaned off I will show you how I I hung it all right let's go ahead and go to the end of the video and I'll share my final thoughts and then I'll show you where I hung it. Okay, so hopefully you were able to follow along with my process. Um, those stickables, I think that's what they were called, they actually work very well. So I know I'm gonna put this photo right back up here on my wall. And I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this one just yet, maybe somewhere in our bedroom or somewhere downstairs, but I love the way this photo came out. I love the bright and vivid colors. Um, so. You know, if you have any questions, make sure you put them down in the comments, down in the description below, and I will make sure to respond to you. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every Tuesday and Friday without fail. Um, thank you so much for joining me today, and thanks for watching. Bye!